What's going on? This is your boy Hawk. Here with a little Saturday evening talking squawk. What's going on with y'all? So I just finally watched the everything but a chip documentary on the 2001 Sixers. You know, I figured I'd wait a couple days. That way I could really watch it a couple of times and analyze it. But man, oh man, does that bring back memories. Not only was it the last time that the Sixers been out the second round, but it's also the last time that we've been to the championship. <clears throat> and even though we didn't win it all that year as the title suggests, man, that was a year. What a time to be a 76ers fan. Especially for a hoops enthusiast like me who was enjoying my senior year at Overbrook. You know what I mean? Shout out to all the Panthers, the Panther alum. They had 12th grade graduating year. Also was in a student work program at Brook. And I worked over at the activity center, athletic center, whatever, where the Sixers practice. On top of being the season ticket holder and going to all the home games along with a few road games that season. I was out there in LA when we won game one. You know, the famous AI step over to Ryan Lou game. You know, I went to, uh, I was at all the home playoff games that year. And man, that building has never been louder than then First Union Center. That game seven against Milwaukee, when we clinched to go to the finals. And the thing is you just knew by the energy in the building, by the atmosphere, that we was going to win. There was no way we was losing that game seven at home. This is not this past year's 76ers team. You know what I mean? That team has some dogs. The MVP, Iverson. Defensive player of the year, the Kimbe Mutombo. Both Hall of Famers, shout out to them. Six man of the year, Aaron McKee. The only other time a six or one six man of the year besides Bobby Jones. And the team was coached by a Hall of Fame coach, the great Larry Brown. Also, our other role players, Eric Snow, Tyrone Hill, George Lynch, Matt Geiger, Kevin Ali, Raja Bell, Jumaine Jones, Todd McCullough, you know what I mean? Shout out to that whole team. Yeah, President Pat Croce, GM Billy King. Man, that's that's not it's by far the best Sixer team in franchise history. They wouldn't hold a candle to the 67 and 83 teams, but they're both two of the greatest teams in NBA history. But I can't name a more besides those two teams, I can't name a more memorable Sixer team. To that 2000, 2001 Atlantic Division champion slash Eastern Conference champion Philadelphia 76ers team. It was just a great season, especially with everything that had transpired that offseason with AI damn near being traded. Man, I remember that summer, you know what I mean? Everybody's nerves was up because we all loved AI. Yeah, AI embraced the city from the moment we drafted him in 96. His whole rookie season was a storybook season, you know, setting the rookie scoring records, five consecutive 40 point games. You know what I mean? The iconic crossover on Michael Jordan. You know what I mean? AI put up some good scoring games against that Dynasty's Bulls team that season. 
He had 37 again. He cracked MJ. Then he had 44 against him in Chicago towards the very end of the season. AI embraced the city and put Philly on the map from the moment he came to the NBA. And then, you know what I mean? The Sixers improved every year once Larry Brown became the coach. Made our first playoff run in 99. Won the first round and was swept by Indiana. Then the following year, win the first round again. Then this time we lose to Indiana in six. So it was like, that was that yellow and blue monkey. We couldn't get off our back. And man, let me tell you, I, I hated that. I don't think there's any team I hated more than that Pacers team of that era. I despise Reggie Miller, Mark Jackson, Jalen Rose, all of them. I despise that whole team. And the fact that they was coached by a Celtic great and legend and Larry Bird didn't make it no better. But you know, 2001 after, and oh, by the way, shout out to Matt Geiger for waving that trade kicker because hadn't he did that, that season possibly doesn't happen. AI probably gets traded to Detroit and who knows what would have been at that point. Matt Geiger was the real MVP for that season. But anyway, I knew it was going to be a magical year. We started out 10-0. and 0. You know what I mean? That first win in New York. And I was at that game, too, at Madison Square Garden. Yeah, I, I've been in my fair share of 76 or away games. My fair share. So I was at uh, the Garden for that first game we win 101 to 72 and put the league on notice that we was coming to have a sensational season and that we did starting off 10 and 0 41 and 14 at the uh, all-star break You know what I mean? Also, shout out to Theo Ratliff because he deserved to be a part of that run as much as anybody. But unfortunately, he had got injured. And this was in the midst of him having an all-star season, too. You know what I mean? He was leading the league in uh, block shots. You know what I mean? He was uh having all he had an all-star season, was leading the league in blocks. And then, you know what I mean, he broke his wrist. And management didn't think that they could contend with the current roster. Now, if you ask me, this is no not on the great Dikembe Mutombo or none of that. You know what I mean? I know Mutombo was the real MVP of that Milwaukee series because he held it down in the paint with his rebounding and uh, shot blocking. But I don't know. I just think that with the current centers we had and uh, Matt Geiger, Nazi Muhammad, and Todd McCullough, I still think we could have won the East. That's just my opinion. You know what I mean? Thankfully, we did make the trade for Matumbo, a Moti Defensive Player of the Year winner, an All Star, and a sure future Hall of Famer. Because he was very important to that playoff run. And, you know, he held his own, did the best he could against the great Shaquille O'Neal. You know what I mean? And shout out to Shaq because he was a part of that documentary and gave that team a lot of credit. 
but shit, Shaq's the most dominant force we've ever seen, and during that time, wasn't nobody stopping Shaq. We would have needed a prime Wilt Chamberlain to accomplish that mission. But anyway, that was a, uh, we had to train Theo. You know what I mean? That was like a bittersweet thing because you know, Theo Ratliff was beloved. He was a fan favorite in Philly. You know what I mean? He was a key part of that 99 and 2000 playoff run. And he was a very huge part of our success through those first 50 games of the 2000-2001 season. You know, we definitely wouldn't achieve that without Theo. You know what I mean? It's just a shame that we had to part ways. But we did get a better player. And we did get to the championship. And at the end of the day... <clears throat> It's business. You know what I mean? Theo understands that. And I'm glad that he was a part of the documentary. You know what I mean? To me, he gets credit for being the Eastern Conference champion as well because he was a part of that foundation that led to us having the number one seed. So, it was just, just a memorable season. You know, I mean, it was definitely the best time of my hoops enthusiast wingspan. You know, I mean, I always reflect back to that time. And like I said earlier, being a high school senior, about to graduate, living my best uh, life of my teenage years. Also, it being the last time that the Sixers made some noise in the postseason. It's definitely something I always reflect back on, but it's been 22 years now. I'll be 40 in, a, in three months. You know what I mean? I was 17 then. So, another run to the NBA Finals for my 76ers. Our Philadelphia 76ers it's definitely long, long overdue. I honestly thought that this season would have been a season with us having our first MVP player since Allen Iverson that year, but I'm not even going to go into that because I've been dealing with deflected fanboys for the past two or three weeks since the Sixers choked in game six. I'm not even going to talk about that game seven on Mother's Day this past year because that game seven should have never, ever, ever happened. Game six should have been the end. And the way the Sixers choked, you know what I mean, was the worst thing I've ever experienced. You know what I mean? As a hoops enthusiast, cheering on my home team. But back to that 2001 team, the last team that brought this city any real phantasm. You know, it's just it's just a shame that we went seven games with the Raptors and the Bucks, which led to injuries. Our whole damn team was beat up by the time the final started. And I'm not saying we beat LA. But I think we could have pushed the series to six games, possibly even seven, if we were healthier. Not making no excuses or anything like that. That's just how much dog that team had in them. They weren't backing down from nobody. And as much as we praise that game one win... You know, people would be like, oh, but they lost the next four straight. But you're missing the point. The point is, we was the only team that handed that Laker team a loss in the postseason. Otherwise, they would have went 15-0. and 0. 
they beat the they swept the first seeded. The San Antonio Spurs had the best record in the league that year, 58 and 24. David Robinson was entering out of his prime. Tim Duncan was entering his prime. But they were still both legends. Legendary status at that time. They were two years removed from winning their first championship together. The Lakers swept them so bad that they had the Admiral and the Big Fundamental crying. That's how bad the Lakers beat them. They swept the Sacramento Kings. And for another thing, shout out to the late great Kobe Bryant. Because I'm tired of uh, cats talking about he was Shaq's sidekick. No, he wasn't. They was a dynamic duo. Shaq was just that dominant. But Kobe was a force in his own right even then. You know what I mean? That's not taking nothing away from Diesel, but I'm sick of cats knocking Kobe like <clears throat> he was just some glorified role player. You know what I mean? He was a superstar. Boy, averaged 30 points a game during that playoff run and close to 30 during the regular season. That's not no sidekick. But anyway, back to uh, the Sixer team. Yeah, we could we had we was the only team that handed them a loss. And yeah, granted they the Lakers were rusty. They had been off for damn near two weeks. You know, they rebounded and won the next four games, and wasn't nobody stopping them because outside of having the best one-two punch of all time, they had great role players. You know what I mean? Big Shot Bob. He's he's won seven championships. There's no fluke in that. And no, he was never the main option, but he always came through with a clutch. Then you had Rick Fox, Derek Fisher, Brian Shaw, Horace Grant, who was part of the uh, first Bulls three-peat. Even that Ryan Harper on the bench, who was part of the second Bulls three-peat. You know what I mean? Coached by the great Phil Jackson. That was a great, great team. That 2001 Lakers has the greatest playoff run of any team in NBA history. I'm not going to say they're the greatest season team in league history, but they definitely had the greatest playoff run in uh, NBA history, the way they dominated that whole playoff run. Yeah, we beat them in that first game, but they quickly rebounded. And they won all three games at the first junior center. Had me damn near in tears because I was at those three games. You know what I mean? And I was so optimistic. I, I swore I would have put my mom's life on it that we had a chance to beat the Lakers for the championship. But, again, it's long overdue. I loved every bit of that documentary that brought back memories. You know, being around the team at their practice facility and being at all of the home games, along with a few road games. And I was even at the All-Star game in DC that year when the East came back down 21 points and AI won MVP. So yeah, that's that's definitely a Hallmark 76 a season. I ranked that season and throughout the 60, 76 a seasons in Philadelphia, I will rank that team only behind the 67 and 83 championship teams. Now, I know people make the argument about the we owe you one doc teams at 77 and 78 and even the teams that got to the finals and lost to the Showtime Lakers in 80 and 82, but I don't know, that 2001 Sixers team just holds a special place in me and maybe I'm being a little biased by ranking them third but that's, you know what I mean, just my opinion. 
And also, it sucks that on NBA 2K, they had the 2001 squad on there. But who is it that they, they, they don't have Eric Snow? There's a couple of key players from that team that they don't have on a damn game. And when I see that, I was disgusted. Yeah, I played with them anyway just to bring back that nostalgia feel, but it's just not right. And that's a topic for a whole another video, the whole NBA 2K and players wanting to get paid for their likeness and all that bullshit. I mean, y'all robbing the fans with that. But again, that's another video for another time. I'm just going to conclude with this. It's been 22 years since that great 2000, 2001, 76ers Eastern Conference championship season. The city and fan base is long overdue for more parades down Broad Street. Seeing how it's been actually 40 years. Matter of fact, the other day marked the 40 year anniversary of the last championship won by the Sixers. And today is the 22 year anniversary of the Sixers winning the Easter Conference title. That team that we're talking about. We beat the Bucks 108 91. AI with the 44 points. But Tumbo, we had 24 points, 19 boards, like six, seven blocks. You know what I mean? He was well deserving of that defensive player of the year. You know what I mean? He made that playoff run very special, along with the MVP, the sixth man of the year. Eric Stone, I mean the whole team you know what I mean had me enjoying my senior year of school but once again it's long overdue and this year's team should have been the next one that win that Easter Conference throne Think about it. The NBA Finals would have opened up in Philly had we got by Boston. And possibly Miami because can't even, can't knock what they've been doing this playoff run. But anyway, stay tuned for more videos. This was just a little Hoops Talking Squawk with your boy Hawk. Hawk out.